Hi everyone, welcome again to the course of structural biology. We are going through uh, structural biology technique x ray crystallography, and we are in the third module of structural biology techniques in respect to the technique of x ray. We are actually at the end of the our course document on crystallography. We have discussed phase problem in the last class. Today, we will again discuss few part of the phase problem, remaining discussions about the heavy atom replacement methods, phase improvement technologies, SIR, MIR, MAD and a little introduction to Cyrus, Myrus and then we will talk about another technique which is molecular replacement to solve the phase problem. So, if I go back little bit and start where we discussed a lot, we clone a protein, purify a protein and get crystal. We have discussed a lot about that. So, we get the crystal and what we do? We do diffraction experiment. We measure the intensities of waves scattered from plane within the crystal in order to calculate the electron density at position x, y, z in the unit cell. As I told, we have crystal, we do diffraction, from there we get the diffraction pattern and then our goal is to get the electron density map. So, we perform the summation over all h, k, l planes. What we get from our diffraction experiment is to separate piece of information. The diffraction image gives us the first information which is the geometrical arrangement of the reflection gives all the information about the crystal lattice and the symmetry of the crystal. The second information we get from the intensity of the reflection that gives part of the information about the content of the lattice. And as I was discussing throughout the few last few lectures, in the second one in the intensity information which gives us the amplitude, but we are not getting the phase and hence it is the phase problem. So, we have to do the calculation of the electron density and we have to perform Fourier transform. So, electron density at x, y, z is the sum of contribution to the point x, y, z of waves scattered from the plane h, k, l whose amplitude depends on the number of electrons in the plane added with the correct relative phase relationship. So, if we again look at the famous formula which we are continually looking at rho x y z is the electron density, V is the volume of the unit cell. So, this is rho, this is V, then structure factor the absolute value of f h k l is the structure factor amplitude, this is alpha the phase alpha h k l phase associated with the structure factor and the waves scattered from the plane h k l. So, as we are continuously talking about how to get the phase, the phase problem. So, how to recover the phase? There is actually no formal relationship between the amplitude and the phases, but only via molecular structure of electron density. If we can assume some prior knowledge of the electron density or structure, this can lead the values of the phases. So, phase value can only be discovered through some prior knowledge of the structure. We have discussed this, but just to put it on the context as I was talking about, if it is a small molecule, if you know the chemistry, then it is easy. But for protein, it is complex molecule, it is not easy. We talked about the methods, the didact method, we discussed details, the experimental phasing using heavy metals, we again discussed and molecular replacement, which is our topic today. But 
In addition, today we will also talk about some of the very interesting features related to the experimental phasing, especially the mathematical ones. Direct method we talked a lot just to summarize, they are based on positivity and atomicity of electron density that leads to phase relationships between the normalized structure factor. So, they try to extract data from the intensity which gives the amplitude the structure factor, but from that intensity that diffraction pattern they want to get more information. Once the phases of some reflections are known, which are some reflections, some reflections where the intensities are very high or can be given a variety of starting values, then the phases of other reflection can be bootstrapped. But this ab initio phase determination are limited to less than 1.2 angstrom resolution. So, lower the number means you now know that higher the resolution. So, we go below 1.2 means we go for very very high resolution. But you also remember that the direct method would help you in protein structure determination also. So, they are used in second bake selects the SERP to find the heavy atom substructure. Why? As I told when the intensity is very high, then it is possible to correlate. So, for heavy atom first we know the atom, we know the chemistry and we know they are very different from the protein contents the carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. So, we could have get the identity of their information. We talked about this the protein we now introduce a heavy atom. So, where because of change of uh, space we got to calculate the Fp the structure factor of the protein. Here with the heavy atom we get Fph and we know that Fph is equal to Fp the structure factor of a protein plus structure factor for the heavy atom. So, we had a structure factor Fp, we now get a different structure factor which is Fph the heavy atom included structure. So, before going into details one thing you should know, do heavy atom makes an impact? So, let us take a look how can a single copper atom in 100 kilo Dalton protein make any difference to the intensities. So, structure factor add up as a random work. Crick and Macdoff in 1956 have calculated this the change of structure factor del f by absolute value of f equal to z h divided by z effective root over 2 n h by 2 n p, where n h is the number of heavy atom, n p is the number of protein atom, j h is the atomic number of the heavy atom and j f is the average of protein atom which is 6.7. This is the change the protein have its vector and then the copper adds with the to the structure factor. So, in 100 kilo Dalton protein copper with atomic number 28 add 5.6 percent that is the impact. Now, depending on this you could choose the heavy metal and you could also understand what would be the concentration optimized concentration of the heavy metal. Why you need to optimize this? Why? So, I talked about and I am talking about the mathematical side and the principles of how heavy metals are used, but if I have to talk about there are a lot of details how the heavy metals are used, but just for your conception think about a protein is largely made up of small hydrogen bonds. When a big metal with its high positive charge and high polarizability, 
suddenly comes inside the protein, it like kind of like a bombardment on the weak hydrogen bond network of the protein. A lot of time they are deleterious, they break the crystal, sometime the protein start changing shapes and all ten type of problems are there. Also that is very much concentration dependent because with increasing concentration those phenomena increase like anything. So, Hampton definitely have screen and when we go for we always kind of screen specially when we have to do isomorphous replacement what we do is screen with different metals and see how they behave with the crystal and in which concentration. So, in many time we add them in the crystal and then see how the crystal is behaving. We take the protein uh, or the crystal add the metal run a gel to see how stable they are. So, a lot of such optimization experiment which metal and what it is is its concentration are uh, important to get a proper experiment. We talked about isomorphous replacement. So, what we do here we do the soaking of protein crystals I talked about we do either soaking where we have a metal solution we put the crystal there or we do co crystallization where in time of crystallization remember we talk in details about crystallization we add precipitants and all we add the metal also. So, soaking protein crystal in heavy atom solution to create isomorphous heavy atom derivatives gives measurable intensity changes which could be used to deduce the position of the heavy atoms. And if you see you will see that there are shifting. So, what is this picture I show this diffraction pattern in the last class also here one protein beta lactoglobulin and the same protein with a mercury crystal like mercury derived crystal. So, one is the native crystal one is the mercury added crystal both data collected and merged. So, merged means superimposed. So, two protein diffraction patterns one is the native protein another is the mercury added protein superimposed and we could see the shift of the peaks vertically relative to one another and we could also see the change of intensity very easily. So, this tells that by addition of heavy metal there are changes happened. Coming to single isomorphous replacement or SIR method, the isomorphous difference can be used as an estimate of the heavy atom structure factor amplitude to determine the heavy atom position using Patterson or direct methods. FH equal to FPH minus FP, heavy atom parameters its x, y, z positions, occupancies, d by Euler thermal factor which is B factor we will discuss uh, in next class can be defined to calculate a more accurate absolute F H the heavy atom structure factor and its corresponding phase which is alpha H. We will talk about argon diagram, argon diagram uh, we are going to put and so how it is important in structure solution. But before that what is argon diagram? Argon diagram in mathematics is a plot of complex numbers as points. The complex number let us say z equal to x plus y i is plotted as the point x y where the real part is plotted in the horizontal axis which is the x axis and the imaginary part is plotted on the vertical axis which is the y axis. So, if 
you look at this figure, you will see that there is the real axis in the x axis, there is the imaginary axis and you see how 3 plus 2 i if you see. So, x plus y i a plus b i minus 4 plus 3 i minus 2 minus 3 i all could be plotted. This plot is called Argand diagram. Now, come to Argand diagram of single isomorphous replacement. You will see that many factors here amplitude of a reflection a p which is the structure factor of the protein a p h which is the absolute value of the structure factor of heavy metal derived protein and f h is the difference which is heavy metals contribution. So, F p is the native crystal the protein crystal, F p h is heavy atom derivative crystal and F h is isomorphous difference the difference between the heavy atom derivative crystal and the native crystal. Similarly, the phases F alpha p is coming from the native crystal alpha p h heavy atom derivative crystal and alpha h isomorphous difference. So, if you see in the periodic table, the heavy atoms which you could choose are all in this row which are tungsten, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, mercury, thallium, lead, bismuth, polonium. In addition, we could also use krypton and xenon which are inert heavy atoms. So, you could easily see that these are much much higher in electron number in comparison to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen which are present in normal protein. I add phosphorus and sulphur also because as we know sulphur present in cysteine and methionine and phosphorus present in phosphomodified proteins. Coming to another geometrical representation called Harker diagram, the two solution for phase of unknown wave where they meet or two solution of phase of interference wave where they meet. If you see this is the substructure, this is the structure of the protein and this is the heavy atom derivative. So, Harker construction for single isomorphous replacement, the two possible phase solution occur where the circle intersects. So, here the circle intersect, here the circle intersect. The problem arises as to which phase to choose the red one or the green one because you could see that there are two different angles. This requires a consideration of phase probability and this is called the phase ambiguity problem in crystallography. Now, we consider epsilon as the lack of closer if you see the f h observed the calculated is perfectly matching here, but observed is up to here the difference is the lack of closer. If we assume all errors are due to a p h calc because, because if you have this then it is perfectly made. So, how they are differentiated? that is probably the error and that errors follow Gaussian distribution, then the lack of closure equal to a p h ops minus a p h calculated the difference this difference which is equal to a p h calc would be divided into a p p exponential i alpha p plus f h exponential i alpha h. 
So, the phase probability for one reflection in an SIR experiment, if you see the problem is that a weighted amplitude representing the centroid of the phase distribution result in the least error. So, you get two peaks and all and if you now see the electron density, this is a 2.6 angstrom single isomorphous replacement electron density map with the final alpha carbon trace of the structure are superimposed. So, you see we are proceeding what happened? So, we had crystals, we got the diffracted diffraction data. Now, we try to solve it, we got amplitude, but we did not get what the phase. Now, we are putting single isomorphous replacement and we get the ED map, electron density map, right. This is a 2.6 angstrom resolution density map, but and this is a small part of that uh, uh, where the final structure is superimposed. So, here you see the alpha carbon stress, here in a zoomed one you see the side chains included here. So, can we improve them? You would see, but then we come to multiple isomorphous replacement where the phase probability using MIR, what we are doing in SIR, we are using one heavy atom derivative here, we are actually using more than one heavy atom to break the phase ambiguity. So, if you see when instead of 1 you use 2, you only cut in 1. So, there is no ambiguity. So, if you see that if we compare this is a 2 heavy atom derivative, this is a 1 heavy atom derivative uh, we talked about that you get the confused 2 peak and the 3 heavy atom derivative you get a very sir peak. So, the problem of phase ambiguity is solved, but we could improve the phase experimental phases from where we start. So, we did the heavy atom replacement and you get the experimental phase, but taking the experimental phase as a starting point, we could do those things. The improvement based on some prior knowledge, what type of knowledge? The methods are solvent flattening, one method we are going to discuss, histogram matching and non crystallographic symmetry NCS averaging. So, solvent flattening, what we are doing sets the values of electron density in the solvent region to a typical value which is given here in contrast to the typical protein electron density. So, actually we are differentiating between a protein and a solvent, so that the solvent could be develop its phase better. And if this is the starting point what we get from the experiment where we are using the typical protein electron density, now after solvent flattening you see that the solvents are getting more clear structure. So, if you see in the actual structure the electron density the waters they are now even more sharp. Histogram matching, what is histogram matching? Histogram matching is basically a image processing thing. So, histogram matching is the transformation of an image so that its histogram matches a specified histogram. Okay. So, if you look at we are talking about two peaks which are plotted against electron density value in the x axis and probability of observing electron density value. So, electron density value and probability of having electron density value, 
we get two peaks electron density distribution from refined atomic coordinates and electron density distribution from isomorphous replacement phases. So, experiment is this and it is becoming better. So, it alters the values of electron density points to conquer with an expected distribution of values. So, by our knowledge where we actually make it better. Then non crystallographic symmetry averaging, but before that I want to talk about non crystallographic symmetry a little bit. A symmetry operation that is not compatible with the periodicity of a crystal pattern in two or three dimension is called a non crystallographic symmetry. In one word I could tell you a very good explanation of non crystallographic symmetry. What comes from nature is non crystallographic symmetry. Like if you look at a human being like me standing, you could make a line. So, there are two same thing in both the sides. This symmetry is non crystallographic symmetry. In protein crystallography, the term non crystallographic symmetry is often but importantly used to indicate a symmetry relationship between similar subunits within the crystallographic asymmetric unit. So, when you get the protein into as in the asymmetric unit, then is it a biological dimer, tetramer, trimer, those would be decided. This use comes from the fact that the operation required to superimpose one subunit on another is similar to a space group operation, but it operates only over a local volume and the superposition may be inexact because the subunits are in different environments. The subunit can be a molecular aggregate, a single molecule, a monomer unit of an oligomeric molecule or a fragment of a molecule. The superposition is inexact because protein subunit in different environments are never identical. At the very least surface side chains are differently ordered and solvation is different because of different interaction with adjacent subunits. So, what they are saying? Suppose it is a dimer, but when it is existing as a dimer, the interaction here and there could be different. The movement of the flexible side chains is obviously different like if you have in the surface a lysine, arginine, glutamate and all these things, they are more flexible type of. So, they have the possibility of many rotamers and it is very obvious that two of the same rotamers are not exactly in a dimer. This is one amino acid, this is the same amino acid, but the side chain rotations are exactly same that is not possible. The use of the term non crystallographic symmetry is improper for two reasons. One a symmetry operation acting on a subspace of a crystal space is called a local or partial symmetry operation. It is a space groupoid operation. Second an operation that superposes two objects only approximately is called a pseudo symmetry operation. So, this is an example of non crystallographic symmetry you see A, B and C and they imposes equivalence on electron density values when more than one copy of a molecule is present in the asymmetric unit. If you see the rho x c r c rho x a plus t c r c and t c are n c s symmetry operators. So, now when you take care of those you get density modification. Remember we looked at this picture 
And now when we have done all those solvent flattening, histogram matching and all, you see there is a beautiful change. The maps are sharper. If you see the extra portions here, I have highlighted the extra portion is not there now. So, the phase is definitely improved and that is where the critical role of these methods solvent flattening, histogram matching and averaging of non crystallographic symmetry. Coming to anomalous scattering, I talked about atomic scattering factors are dependent on the Bragg angle and on wavelength. One at the absorption age when the X-ray photon energy is sufficient to promote an electron from an inner cell leading to a breakdown in Friedel's law. We are coming to Friedel's law. This breakdown gives rise to anomalous differences that can be used to locate the anomalous scatterers. So, what is Friedel's law? The members of a Friedel pair have equal amplitude and opposite phase. If all atoms scatter equally, then the amplitudes remain equal, but the phase relationship no longer holds. This is because the term is always positive. So, if you compare in equal atom case, all atoms have the same scattering behavior. So, when you compare between F H K L and F H K L bar, you will not get the difference. But when an anomalous scatterer is present, there is bivoid differences F theta lambda equal to F 0 theta plus F prime lambda plus I F double prime lambda. In this time, F H K L not equal to F H K L bar and the breakdown of Friedel's law is del F plus minus equal to del p h plus minus del p h minus the differences you could see here. So, the contribution of f 0 will be greatest at pi by 2 and smallest when f 0 is 0. So, if you see the del f difference is largest when the contribution F0 from the anomalous scattering atoms is phi by 2 out of phase with that of the non anomalous atoms. And del F is smallest when the F0 contribution is in phase with that of the non anomalous atoms. So, if you see you will clearly see the difference here of the contribution and that is used to determine the phase. So, Variation in anomalous scattering at the k peak edge of selenium as we have talked earlier f theta lambda equal to f 0 theta plus f prime lambda plus i f double prime lambda where f prime lambda is the dispersive term and i f double prime lambda is the absorption term. So, if you see here the k edge is where the f prime and f double prime are greatest for selenium the k edge is 0 0.9795 angstrom. So, now by utilizing this we could use and I just introduce another terms as I told Cyrus and Myrus. Cyrus is single isomorphous replacement with anomalous scattering uses anomalous scattering to break the phase ambiguity in a single isomorphous replacement experiment. You could consider it as a hybrid of both the isomorphous replacement along with the anomalous dispersion or anomalous scattering. Multiple isomorphous replacement with anomalous scattering is Myras. It uses multiple anomalous scatterers to break the phase ambiguity in a multiple isomorphous replacement experiment. 
both of these use the anomalous or bivoid difference in the same way as the isomorphous difference in Patterson or direct methods to locate the anomalous scatterers. We could talk even more complicated situations where there are caveats sidus and minus are not used and we go further, but I kind of stop here because of the time constant of the course and I shift to the very important part of solving the phase problem which is molecular replacement method. So, molecular replacement is a method of solving the phase problem in X-ray crystallography. This process was developed by Michael Rossman. So, MR relies upon the existence of a previously solved protein structure which is similar to our unknown structure from which a diffraction data is derived. This could come from a homologous protein which is having similar property to the protein you are working or from a lower resolution protein NMR structure of the same protein. Actually, if I say molecular replacement is a method which make revolution in the field of crystallography. Why? Two reasons. When I am talking about using metals, it sounds cool, right? But the problem is at least in the initial phase of structure solution, people firstly were unaware about the bitter effect or the poisonous effect of handling the heavy metals. They have radiation which could lead to cancer. One thing people were unaware about the actual fact, but also a great thing would build up on many sacrifices. So, there are were dedicated scientists who have who are not caring their lives and working continuously towards solving structures and that is why the field have grown into this amazing volume where we are looking at. But it was true that this process is not feasible because you cannot ask a person to do experiment where you by yourself know that doing this experiments would be exposing the scientist towards developing cancer. So, that was one of the very big thing. Another thing as a young student, I do not know how you feel about that, but ask your senior who specially is in fourth year, fifth year of their PhD and they will tell you that. As I told when you are working as a crystallographer, Firstly, you are going through the challenge of cloning, you are doing cloning, cloning is one page in your actual academic course, but when you start doing it, you understand how much challenges it would have. So, you take one year to get your clone properly done especially it is over expressing, then you are struggling with the solubility, then you get the protein to be purified and then you come to the caveat which we talked a lot, crystallization. Suppose you get a crystal, you get diffraction or not, you get good diffraction, then when you start solving data and that is not the end, you are on the trap of the phase problem. Now, you go back and you have to perform this metal optimization experiment taking months. So, a lot of people they were very frustrated and especially people did not want to come to the field of protein crystallography because of this problem. Now, Michael Rossman comes up 
with an idea if somehow we could grab the phase of a similar protein or specially of a same protein you will ask me why same protein would be important very important because remember continuously from the starting of the course I am telling this thing why you are solving those structure you are solving the structure because you want to get the function. So, you get a protein structure, but now you perform mutations is the same protein let us say your protein is 300 amino acid that is where most of the proteins are at an average. So, if you make one mutation that is only 0.33 percent of that whole protein. So, the protein and the mutant with 3 mutation is only 1 percent deviated. So, 99 percent identical that is where Michael Rossman puts his idea into. He thought somehow if we combine the power of theory so that the structure which was solved of a wild type protein native protein could be utilized to solve the phases of the mutants the student would have been making his work much faster and that is where I call it a revolution. So, let us go into the process. The original concept of the molecular replacement method was of a three stage process and as I told Rossman and Blue in 1962 determination of relative orientation rotation of identical unknown structure in the same or different crystal. Use of information from one to determine the position of the local non crystallographic operators relative to the crystallographic symmetry element. So, first one is your rotation, second one is translation. The phase determination using a knowledge of the non crystallographic operators derived in 1 and 2. So, you do the rotation, you do the translation, and you utilize them to get a phase. So, molecular replacement is the process of solving the phase problem for an unknown structure by placing the atomic model for a related known structure in the unit cell of the unknown structure in such a way as to best reproduce the observed structure factors. The known model once placed may be used to calculate phases which in combination with the observed structure factors for the unknown structure all the model to be rebuilt and refined. So, from the experiment you get the structure factor you get the amplitude somehow by doing the theoretical operation of rotation and translation you fit that with the previously solved structure and get the phase and solve the new structure. So, the calculation involves a six dimensional search over all possible orientation and translation of the known model in the unit cell of the unknown structure. As this calculation is generally too time consuming to perform in full. So, usually it is divided into two parts. The first one a three dimensional search over all possible orientation to determine the orientation of the model. So, this is the first one the rotational search. A three dimensional search over all possible translations to determine the position of the oriented model. So, then you do the translational search and then you get the complex and you do the refinement further. 
So, there are things to check to start the process of molecular replacement. One, the number of molecules to search for. Given the molecular weight of the target protein and the dimension of the target cell, it will return a set of probabilities for the number of molecules in the asymmetric unit, which is Matthews coefficient. We also have to check for twinning. There are programs C truncate or SF check which could be used to examine the data to assess the likelihood that the data is twinned or not. Is there non crystallographic symmetry? You also have to check. So, you have to, if you know that it is there, this information would be helpful with refinement and you could use self rotation function. So, first we have to do a finding a search model. There are online resources such as the EBI or OCA services for doing faster sequence matching searches. I have given the link. You could also do locally held related PDB models if available. Suppose you already solved one of your structure and you are making mutants. So, you could use the local PDB to do that. You could also perform secondary structure matching based on best scoring models from sequence based search. Again, I have given the link. You could look for domain components from scope or multimeric forms of the search models from PISA. So, general rule of thumb is that the sequence identity of homolog to the target must be greater than 30 percent for the process to work. See that is what is an enormous growth of this field. When Michael Rossman MGR developed MR molecular replacement, it generally happened for the same protein. So, initially it needs extremely high identity, but from there now we could even solve a protein with 30 percent identity. Even when the sequence identity is lower than 30 percent, it is important to get as good a sequence alignment possible. So, you could use multiple sequence pulling in many related sequences rather than pairwise. So, rather than looking at local search, you could go for global profile fitting alignment, what could happen in BLAST. So, how to prepare your search model? signal to noise problem, anything that is in your model which is not likely to be in your target structure needs to be removed as it will only contribute to the background noise. You have to understand this point even critically. So, suppose as I told when it is the same protein, this sing signal to noise problem was not there, but now when you are going for 30 percent, 40 percent identity models, your unknown structure, the unknown protein and the target protein could have been very different. They have been very different in terms of binding ligands, solvent and what not they could have very different loops, very different flexibility in different part of the loops, you have to take care. Prune back side chains that are not aligned. So, you have to take care uh, initially for advantage what we do, we take all the side chains and then we use the C alpha stress, but if you want to keep, you could keep the side chains which are exactly aligned and you take out the other ones. You definitely cut out the flexible loops. You cut out the waters 
and any other crystallographic solvent or precipitant which were actually gone inside. And before going to the next step, I want to introduce about CCP4. CCP4 is collaborative computational project 4. It is a developing software for macromolecular X-ray crystallography. This is the logo of CCP4. CCP4 exists to produce and support a world leading integrated suite of programs that allows researchers to determine macromolecular structures by X-ray crystallography and other biophysical techniques. So, they started with X-ray crystallography, but now they help definitely cryo-EM, NMR, but other spectroscopic techniques also could get their analysis using CCP4. CCP4 aims to develop and support the development of cutting edge approaches to experimental determination and analysis of protein structure and integrate these approaches into the suit. CCP4 is a community based resource that support the widest possible researcher community embracing academic not for profit and for profit research. CCP4 aims to play a key role in the education and training of scientists in experimental structural biology. It encourages the wide dissemination of new ideas, techniques and practice. Even you know when I am going through the crystallographic part, especially the software, a lot of these I have also taken from different CCP4 training modules. So, Worldwide researchers have taken you know their presentations, their academic materials, their softwares and we are as a scientific community indebted to them. Set up in 1979 to support collaboration between researchers working on such softwares in United Kingdom. CCP4 was originally supported by the UK Science and Engineering Research Council which is SERC and is now supported by the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council which is BBSRC. So, as I was talking about we need softwares for preparing the search model. There are various programs in CCP4 to help doing this few I am naming if you go and play with the software you will know more. Chainsaw which prunes side chain based on given alignment. Molrep creates its own alignment and prunes side chain accordingly. Cutting loops look at B factors I will explain B factor in details in the next class. If above an acceptable threshold cut out those residues using PDP car. Removing water and other small molecules use PDB set. So, CCB4 and molecular replacement. There are molecular replacement programs, MOLREP, Phaser, Amore, Automated MR, Bulbs, Mr. Bump. Helper applications, a lot of them, I am just talking about some. Matthews Quave, remember to know the number of molecules Matthews coefficient, chainsaw, PDB car, PDB set, co odd format, superpose, PISA. So, this is the CCP4 program suit you could go and check whatever they have. They have categorized them in analysis, model generation, amore suit, utility and in those different you know categories. MOLREP which we are going to talk about is program for molecular replacement in the case where a homologous structure has already been identified. The steps the program will attempt to find the number of molecules expected in the asymmetric unit as entered by the user. So, you could enter there or they could have done the self calculation using Matthews coefficient. A PDB file for the best solution is the output. Additional options are there which are self rotation function. So, you 
you go for a solution, but there could be a self rotation function. Search for model in a map alignment also can perform individual steps in more difficult cases. So, when it would be easier it would be automated, but then you have to put your inputs and there are programs which will face difficult situations. So, if you look at the MOLREP output, you could look at the output log file, examine the RF the rotational function score, examine the translational function score and also you look at the contrast score that is the contrast score is very important. I will show you. Check to see if the number of molecules asked for have been found. Output PDB file will contain the best position model. So, if you see here, here you get S11 at the top. This is kind of a ideal situation because you always want the first solution of both the rotational function and translational function to provide the solution. And you see that the contrast here also 14 which is high. So, and you also see that after that it is 2 1, it would be ideal if it comes 3 1 and in, in that way, in that combination. So, this is details about the cross rotation function, you will see the list of top rotational function peaks and you see how the numbers here and you see the polar angles, you see the Euler angles which is calculated specifically in CCB4 and you get the R factor here. So, this is rotational function and this is R factor. R factor uh, it will talk about the organization of the structure, we will talk in details in the next class. In the translational function you see the top solution as I told here you get 1 1 which is again the good thing. The contrast you see it is 3.53 polar angles fractional fractional translations like translational solution in each of the x y and z direction and you get the R factor also the score. More refinement you do less the R factor would be and that is one of the very good estimation of how your refinement is going. So, in summary molecular replacement is the process of retrieving the phase information for a target structure using a related known structure. It is a revolution in the field of protein crystallography. CCP4 provides several programs and helper tools to perform molecular replacement. If you are having difficulty, you should try them all. If no search model use the program bulbs or Mr. Bump to do the work for you. Before experiment, you could also use Mr. Bump or Bulbs model search modes to check to see if good models are available or not. And last but not the least, see a very interesting thing. We are talking about experiment, right? We are talking about X ray crystallography and we are talking about solving the phase problem. But in if you look at now in molecular replacement what it is doing, it is doing a threefold rotation followed by a threefold translation. So, what you are doing is theory. So, you are performing a theoretical operation to solve a experimental problem that is what the so I would say the greatness because we already even when Michael Rossman have done that, 
he had not thought about that there would be a huge gap between the sequence we are getting of the protein and the structure. But now you know I have explained very clearly it is gradually increasing and the gap between structure and sequence are increasing very very rapidly. In that juncture we should talk about the fact that molecular replacement is not only helping the field of crystallography, it have also bring a real change, a real revolution in the field of theoretical prediction of protein structure. So, now people are thinking if some theoretical operation could enable to solve a experimental problem, then why not it is possible to do theory. And if you just go back and start remembering, so if you just go and start remembering what we have learned about protein, the specificity starting from the peptide where they have the restriction of double bond, the L chirality, the restriction of the movement of the rotamers which is very cleverly predicted by Ramachandran and last but not the least this molecular replacement. You could see an amazing possibility of applying theory in predicting protein structure. And as I told from the beginning of the course, this is what that make us very excited. This is what we love protein about. Protein is the only biological molecule with its all diversity have some hidden rules inside and that gives us opportunity to do more predictive models to study more when experiment is not even with us. And the concept starts the idea that yes we can start from the point of molecular replacement that is where its important is, importance is. Thank you very much. We have kind of finishing up the X-ray crystallography uh, module, we have only one class left and I will discuss about how to submit and how to do some further. So, we are almost having the structure in hand, we just have to refine it and then after refinement we will deposit it, we will talk about that in the next class, thank you for listening. Please stay tuned, please keep asking questions. I am trying to answer, but you know when you are teaching in a classroom where there is no student, but you are facing more than 2000 students, it is a very different situation. So, please help us, please help me with your questions. Thank you very much.